we've always been teaching phonics, it isn't something new. Um, it, we just have had a different approach to teaching it. Shh! The I. The best thing about it is the fact that it um, accesses all learners. Uh, uh. It's a new way of teaching, so we're learning all the time. T ah. Oh. In the past, we would have expected children to, to learn the alphabet, to learn the names of all of the letters and a corresponding phoneme for each of those. But now we're expecting them to learn um, the 43 phonemes by the end of the reception year. So the expectations now have really been raised. It's time for us to do our phonics learning for today. And what we're going to do first of all is we're going to do some recall and revisiting of some phonemes that we already know and some tricky words. I wonder who can tell me what phoneme this is. Katie! Ch -ch well done. When I came here, I was really concerned about standards in reading and writing right across the school. The particular concern for me is that children in Year 6 couldn't spell. What was really missing was a consistent approach. Staff were using a variety of schemes. Some children weren't following any particular spelling pathways at all. So it meant that the teaching was really patchy, really patchy. And, of course, the fact that children couldn't spell, it meant they couldn't improve their writing. So we had to do something quite dramatic in order to improve standards in our school. What we did was introduce a number of strategies to develop effective reading and writing, one of which, of course, was implementing a whole school phonics programme, but with a particular focus in Foundation Stage and Key Stage 1. Eyes. Go on. Well done, Junaid. Your turn, everyone. Lovely. What phony that is. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Phonics on its own won't work. We need to make sure that children are developing language comprehension alongside that, so that when they when they read texts, they'll not only be able to decode the words to read them, but they'll actually also understand them and, and take meaning from them. Shh, shh, shh. Pig is feeling really cold. I've been teaching for seven years now, and in the past, phonics wasn't seen as such an important part of the school day. But now, it's seen as one of the most important things that we teach the children because it opens up the rest of the curriculum. Well done. It's a k o t. Can you sign talk that word? K o t. When we first started the phonics programme, because we were having to teach the four parts session at such a fast pace, it was very hard to get the children into the routine. But over time, they became more aware of the routine and more enthusiastic about their learning. The word coat is a very special word because the word coat has got an O sound in the middle. K O. I wonder who can tell me something special about the O sound, the O phoneme. What two letters have we got? O and the I. Well done, Manisha. You're right. The O phoneme. <coughs> it's got a special word because it's got two letters in. It's called a diagraph, and it's got an O and an A, Mervish. I'm going to give you some little mirrors and I want you to make the O phoneme in the mirror and I want you to say what happens to your mouth. We're going to have ten seconds to do that. Children are looking at the shape that their mouths are making when they're saying the sounds, um, thinking about whether their tongue is on the roof of their mouth or, or low in their mouth, whether their teeth are together or not. So all of those things do support children in, in pronouncing the phonemes accurately. Who can tell me what happens to your mouth when you make the O oh. sound? What happens, Jabby? It went in a circle. It went in a circle. And then what happened? Did it stay in the circle? Go on, Matthew. It gone like a uh, shot. Sure. You're right, Matthew. Go and when children are segmenting, we often see them using robot arms. So they would move their arms um, along with each phoneme just to have that physical connection to the, the sounds that they're hearing. Good. 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 Good.
Ode. Danette, can you tell us what word that is? Ode. Ode. Road when you drive. When children are, are pronouncing sounds, dialect can be a real issue. Um, today the children were learning the O sound and in the black country where the school is set, um, local dialects, the children might say Oa instead of O. Instead of saying boat, they might say boat. And whilst we really value the children's dialect, we, we do realise that they have to pronounce the sounds correctly in order to be successful in spelling the words. <laughs> Let you in. They have stayed. Blow it down. Here, the children are taking what they've learnt on the carpet into uh, play activities where they're using the skills and knowledge that's been taught to them. They're taking it into all areas of learning, so through creative play, um, with the, the artwork that they're doing and the role play, um, and developing their speaking and listening skills as well. Thank you. And an O and a D. Road. Oh, I got road. The children who've gone over to the sand pit, they've um, found the, the words that we've buried there with the O sounding that the children have been focusing on today. And they've used the sound buttons to read those words. And then they've taken that into their play. So they started to build a tower and then decided they'd build a road around the tower. So they were then um, blending the word road as they were doing that. Oh, toad. Coat. Now. During reception, the children learn all their 43 phonemes. Once they get into year one, we take these phonemes further and look at the alternative phonemes for that grapheme. Helen is also okay. teaching the year one class. Now, I am going to sound talk the word knit. Are you ready? Mm e Can you all do that for me? Mm e It makes a diagraph and it makes a n mm sound. Everybody, just lock that in your brain. When we were learning the n mm phoneme, after we'd done our four-part teaching sequence on the carpet, the children went off to their child-initiated activities and one of the activities they were doing was knitting and knotting to help them remember about the n mm phoneme. It's really important that staff are very well prepared. It does involve a lot of preparation and a lot of resourcing. They need time to look at the materials to be able to prepare the resources so that they can then feel ready to approach the teaching of this new programme quite effectively. Come add a big bad cat called Sam. If you had a range of levels of ability within your class, you, I mean, you could have children, say, working at four different phases. You've got to then plan and resource each of those phases, and that would then involve the involvement of other members of the staff as well. So, you know, that, I suppose, could be seen as, as a pitfall. I chased her... her and... Well, we actually assess the children each half term and when they come to the end of each phase in their phonics learning, but also you can see the progression on a daily basis through the children's writing and reading skills. Please take these cakes to Willie. For us teachers, it's a new way of teaching, so we're learning all the time, and I use things like these with the phoneme on, but also a word underneath just to help to remind me of, of the actual pure sound. Two months later and Year One's daily phonics session has now progressed to include more complex phonemes. Normally, when we've been learning about the er uh phoneme before, we have spelt it with a U and an R. But Kyle, how is it spelt in these words? I and R. Oh, do you know, Kyle, you're nearly, nearly right. You're really, really close. Hello. Rebecca, can you help Kyle a little bit more? 
an E, an A, and an R. Sometimes a uh, is spelt E, A, R. The best thing about phonics is that children are excited about it. They want to engage in their phonics lessons, they enjoy their phonics lessons. And then when they're um, learning through the rest of the curriculum, you can see them applying those skills and they're very excited about it, which is brilliant as a teacher to see that happening. If you're not sure how to read the word, what do you need to do? You need to sound talk it. Well done, Rebecca. Can you sound talk that word? P uh, uh, Pearl. So what does that Pearl? Well done. Who thinks they can do the last word? Very, very hard. <laughs> that is so close. Can you say the whole of the word then? How we would say it? Rehearsal. Rehearsal. Well done, Sarah. <laughs> Looking for split diagraphs. Split diagraphs. I end up with A. I, I, I. The children love using words like phoneme, split diagraph, grapheme because they're big words and it makes them feel grown up. It was too hot, so they went for a walk. We've been using this particular programme since May of 2007 and we've tracked children's progress really carefully on a half-termly basis and as a result we can see that this particular programme is, um, is had a, a really major impact on teachers' expectations about children's capabilities but also it has really accelerated children's progress in reading and writing, particularly reading, at all levels. Grandmother had a party. Now that we've got a, a very structured and consistent approach to teaching phonics, teachers can um, assess children. So if a child moves to a different class or even to a different school, teachers have a way of knowing where the children are and what their next steps for learning will be. Everyone 